Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. We're doing another ranking video. It's honestly been a minute since I've done one, which I didn't realize how long it had been. Like, I knew it had been a bit, but I didn't realize it had been like almost half a year. But also in fairness, the last ranking video we did was traumatizing. <laughs> so I think we all kind of needed a break, but when I was trying to think of things that we could do for a ranking video, I actually thought about a stream that I did a few weeks ago where we were talking about influencer scams and I kind of had like a light bulb moment, like that has really strong ranking potential. So we're doing it. Before we get into it though, I did want to give a quick shout out to HelloFresh who sponsored today's video. HelloFresh is America's number one favorite meal kit and they just make cooking at home a lot more fun, easy and affordable because you don't have to worry about going grocery shopping or meal planning because Everything you need is delivered straight to your door. They have a ton of great recipes to choose from every week, plus low carb, carb smart, pescatarian, and vegetarian options as well. But regardless of whatever option you pick, all of the produce that HelloFresh sources comes fresh and directly from farmers. It's great for saving time too, because you can actually get dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes. But me and my mom have actually noticed that a lot of the times we can actually do it in even less, which is great. But if you're looking for a super speedy meal, they've actually also got oven ready and 10 to 20 minute meals sections as well that you can look out for that only take 10 to 20 minutes to make. What's also nice is that since all the ingredients are pre-portioned, there isn't just less prep, but also less food waste because they give you the exact amount of ingredients you need to use for the dish. HelloFresh's carbon footprint is actually 25% lower than meals made from store-bought groceries. Plus the packaging HelloFresh uses to ship your food is almost made entirely from recyclable and or already recycled content. They're also really flexible, so if you want to change your food preferences or your delivery day or you want to cancel a week, all you have to do is go on their website and it's super easy. I usually cook the meals with my mom, which is a lot of fun. It's a nice way to kind of try out new things and I also like that I have a reliable stack of recipe cards where I know how to make those meals. But I would say the thing that I like the most is it just makes me a lot less likely to resort to food delivery apps, which we're obliterating my wallet. So if you want to check it out for yourself, go to hellofresh.com and use code CaseyAyonzo12 to get 12 free meals, including free shipping. That's code CaseyAyonzo12 to get 12 free meals, including free shipping at hellofresh.com. Thanks again to HelloFresh for sponsoring. Now let's get back into the video. I have actually made a video before on YouTuber scams. It was an exploring the world of video that I did. I think it was like over a year ago at this point, And it kind of covered most of the big scams at that time. But in fairness, I do feel like there's a difference between exploring the world of video and a ranking video. It's like comparing apples and oranges in terms of energy. Like they're not sisters, they're very distant cousins. So of course, before we start getting into actually ranking everything, we have to introduce the tiers themselves. If we're new here, we like to kind of customize the tiers, give them a bit more spice. And the first one is the no effort, just vibes tier. I think that this one is definitely reserved for at least in my opinion, lower risk scams, which I'm not saying it's not a scam, but if I was put in the position where I had to be scammed by the things that we're gonna be ranking today, I would prefer to be scammed by the ones in this tier. That's obviously subjective though. The next tier is actually the MLM babe tease tier, which in order for a scam to end up in this tier, it has to fit an extremely niche energy. Like I'm looking for the, hey babe, I was just looking at your profile and I think you'd be a perfect fit for my team energy. The hive mind, the faux girl bossery of it all. If it does have that energy, then it lands in this tier. Otherwise, pack up and leave. After that, we have the manager expectations tier, which is kind of similar to the no effort just vibes tier, but I feel like the difference is that there's a bit more thought that goes into the scams that end up in this category. Like I feel like they're almost like aware of it, but they're rationalizing the scam. So if it's that kind of situation, then it ends up in this tier. Next, we have a very special tier in my opinion, which is the Gaslight Gatekeep Girl Boss tier. The reason that this tier is so important is because it is the tier for the female entrepreneurs, the female change-making business women who are paving the way and proving that not just men can teeter the line of, is this kind of illegal? Not really, but it's super shady and they can do it well. Gaslight gatekeep girl boss. What are you gonna do about it? I have no idea. The final tier in my opinion is definitely gonna be home to the worst scams. Like, I mean the ones that aren't just causing a ruckus online, but I feel like there's gonna be serious trouble outside of the internet if they keep doing it. Like, I'm not saying right now anything's gonna happen, but I feel like if they keep kind of going down that path, maybe a membership to the Crowbar Hotel is in their future. 
The first thing that we're going to be ranking today, I don't even know what to call it because I don't really think there's a term for it yet. So I'm just going to hope that you guys know exactly what I'm talking about when I say those phone number things. But those things are slowly driving me insane. There is just MLM energy right out of the gate. And I'm not even talking about like the structure of having people sign up for texts. I'm talking about the texts themselves. Like you couldn't get any more Hey Babe. And the product isn't even really that different half the time. Like. Moldy LuLaRoe leggings, moldy vlog. What the fuck is the difference? I personally have been avoiding these things like the plague because you kind of already know what you're gonna be signing up for. Like they frame it as if they're gonna be texting you personally, but you know that people with tens of millions of followers are not texting every single person that's signing up for that mailing list. Unfortunately for me though, it isn't just influencers that do this stuff, it's also bands and artists. And instead of sending pre-sale codes through emails anymore, they've started to do them through these texts. And I made the mistake of signing up for one of these phone number things to get a pre-sale code. And I've never been filled with so much immediate regret in my life. When I try to explain to you the bombarding that happened on my phone that day, the stage five clingery actually, Hey, thanks for signing up. Have you watched our new music video? Oh my god, so glad you're here. Check out our new single. We have a few shows coming up. We don't know if you bought tickets or not, so we're just gonna send this even though you might have already bought tickets. Have you checked out our new album yet? How about our merch? Do you want to buy some of that? Enough. I will do whatever you want. Just stop texting me. Like, I know you're not asking me how my day is going. I also know you do not give a shit about my favorite color. Why are you doing this? I do think it's pretty obvious out of these tiers where it's gonna be going. The MLM babe tease tier, not really because the structure of it is like an MLM, but just the tone of it is very, hey babe. Next we have Morphe brushes. What did Morphe brushes have on 2016 beauty gurus? Like, I need to know what incriminating evidence they had on them because of the chokehold, and I'm not kidding, the literal chokehold they had on that community back then that was just insanity. Like there had to be a gun to these people's heads off screen or a really, really good affiliate program, which I think we all know the answer to that. The phrase use my code for 10% off Morphe brushes is so deeply ingrained in my psyche. I will never be able to escape that ever. And I'm sorry, but the MLMness of it all is just completely unmistakable. I guess at the end of the day for me, it's just the idea that these influencers we're getting such a massive commission check from their coupon codes that they would only shill out Morphe brushes to all of their followers. And it does kind of feel pyramid scheme esque even though it isn't technically a pyramid scheme because it's not like if somebody uses that code, they can get their own code that they would show other people. So I guess instead of like a pyramid scheme, it's kind of like a lumpy pancake. Still shady though, just, in a more deflated way. I guess for this one too, this also fits in the emblem babe tease tier. I have a feeling this tier is gonna be a lot fuller than I anticipated it would, but I honestly just feel like early Morphe brushes does fit in here. I'm not saying they are an MLM, but I'm saying it's it's a little bit of a tease. Like, was Morphe heading out free Mercedes? I I don't know. I don't know. But they're a bit of a tease. The next game that we're gonna be ranking is the it's free and you just pay for shipping when in actuality, the price of the product is in the shipping cost, which I thought that we were over those things, but apparently we're not. But I'm sure some of you guys have already caught exactly where this whole scam concept is going because one of the tiers is actually named after a situation involving this kind of scam, which is the manage your expectations tier. If you're a bit confused right now, I'm gonna give a really quick backstory just to kind of bring me up to speed, but I will be keeping the context pretty short because I know a lot of people have heard this story before, but if you are curious on hearing a little bit more about it, I'll link one of my videos where I talk about it a bit more in depth. But basically what happened at the surface level was there was this company called Kenza Cosmetics that was selling makeup brushes that were apparently worth $80, but they were selling them for $0 as part of their clearance sale and all you had to do was pay for shipping. Where it started getting messy was when they actually got a few influencers to promote the sale, like Tana Mojo and Gabby Hanna, and they promoted the brushes saying they were $80 brushes that were gonna be free, and a bunch of their fans bought them. The issue with this though is that a lot of the people that had bought these brushes had either not gotten the brushes at all, had to wait ages for them, or when they finally did get them, 
They ended up getting brushes that were super shitty quality, and it turned out that people had reverse searched the images and found out that they were just AliExpress brushes that were worth $2. So it was clearly a scam, and a lot of the fans of these influencers who had promoted the brushes wanted answers. And Gabby Hanna gave us this iconic line in her answer. But I would also add, manage your expectations a little bit. It's just so good because it's such textbook gaslighting. Like I know that that word gets a workout online where people just use it for the completely wrong situations, but this is a prime example of gaslighting. I'm gonna tell you that these brushes are worth $80, but they're free and you should buy them because they're free but worth $80. But then once you get them and you're mad that they're shitty quality, I'm gonna tell you that you should manage your expectations because they were free. Why would you expect them to be worth $80 if they were free? Like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> What's really crazy to me though, is that the Kenza Cosmetics scandal was a really big deal at the time. And a lot of people on the internet knew just how much shit these influencers got for being a part of it. So you would assume that influencers wouldn't be a part of those things anymore, but you can find examples of it as recent as last summer. The Hype House, for example, decided to sell a free hype chain because why be a scammer when you can also be tacky? In terms of the tier list though, I will be managing my expectations. Speaking of the hype house actually, the next thing we're gonna be ranking are content houses. I can't lie and say that I don't know why I feel that content houses are scammy because when I was doing my video on them a few months ago, the amount of articles that showed the scams going on within content houses, like I'm not even talking about content houses scamming their fans, I'm talking about content house members scamming their own members. It was ridiculous. It's all very odd, and I feel like because of that, it almost deserves its own tier, but because we're working with what we have, I guess the best place it could fit is manage your expectations tier. The next thing that we're ranking, I wish I was joking, but I actually have it written down as literally anything Tana Mojo has tried to sell her audience. Tana Mojo really went what if I just never try when it comes to selling my audience things? Like, ever. There's the Tana by Tana perfume, her lingerie line, a knockoff Vivian Westwood necklace for some reason, and of course, TanaCon. I just think if there's any kind of scam that belongs in the no effort just vibes tier, it's anything that Tana Mojo has put out. And I know that a lot of her products end up getting exposed as drop shipping, but I do think at the end of the day, she does not know what's going on. Like, I feel like she's so far removed from the product that she doesn't even know it's a scam. So when her followers get pissed at her and are like, hey, you scammed me. She's just genuinely like, oh, okay, story time. So off to the no effort, just vibes, here you go. Moving on from that though, the next scam we're gonna be ranking is I don't necessarily want to say it's a new one, but I do think it's gotten ridiculously popular in the past year, and that would be crypto promo. Crypto or stock promo right now is just so interesting to me, mainly because it's just such an entertaining shitstorm, but it's not as entertaining when you remember that there are a lot of people who aren't in the position to lose a lot of money, who are doing just that because their favorite influencer inspired them to. I don't know how they're gonna crack down on this stuff, but there is literally no way that they aren't gonna figure out a way how to because there's just way too many people that are falling prey to some dork on Twitter who strung together a convincing enough tweet about how you should sink your life savings into Dogecoin or you're gonna miss out on the chance to become a billionaire. Now the question of where crypto promo fits on this tier list. I think it's pretty obvious it's incoming jail era. The next game we're gonna be looking at is the ever so popular growth course scam. If you take away anything from watching this video, please never pay actual money for any kind of growth course where someone's claiming they're gonna help you become famous on social media. They don't actually know how they got as big as they are on social media. The same way that anybody online has no actual clue how they got their following because we're all subject to this big, scary, unknown algorithm that'll just decide on a random Tuesday that we should all watch this guy drown in a kayak. Sarah, this has never happened and if I move it sinks lower. <laughs> I'm not saying that there aren't tips and tricks that can help you grow, but I do think that the best headspace you can be in is that all of the work that you put in is just to put you in a position to get lucky. 
because I do think it is one of those situations online because algorithms are just so random. And all of those tips are things you can find online for free. I think what bothers me about these influencer courses so much is that they'll always charge an arm and a leg for it and they'll justify it being like, oh, you're investing in your future. I'm sharing my wealth of knowledge that I worked so hard to get. And then it'll end up being the most basic tips and there's tons of people complaining because they spent so much money on it. I just find it really twisted that so many influencers have been able to make a new stream of income that's solely based on selling their followers this pipe dream that if they buy their expensive course, they'll immediately become Instagram famous or Twitter famous or TikTok famous or whatever other platform famous. And I'm sure we all know exactly what kind of energy that's giving. MLM Babe Tees. The next game that I wanted to look at is the Bella Delphine Bathwater. Bella Delphine Gamer Girl Bathwater is just a concept that breaks boundaries. I don't think anybody can deny that. Should the boundaries have been broken? I don't know, that's a different discussion, but it was a thing. She dared to ask, will people buy my bathwater for $30? And people did. They hooked it up to their PCs, they drank it, they made a shrine out of it. Is it all completely bonkers? Of course, but it worked. And for that, I think she belongs in the triple G tier. Gamer bathwater girl bossery, if you will. Next, we have conventions and tours. I really think this is subjective because it honestly depends so much on who's hosting it. I think there are a lot of great examples of conventions and tours that have been hosted by YouTubers or any kind of influencer, but the ones that have been hosted by an influencer and have gone to utter shit just get a lot more attention. But since we're focusing on the train wrecks, I do actually have a personal favorite that I wanna to rank today specifically, which is the Caroline Calloway workshop. How it all started was this girl named Caroline Calloway, who was Instagram famous, decided that she wanted to host a workshop for her followers that was gonna cost $165. To justify the price, she made a ton of promises like care packages, included lunch, orchid crowns, which she was super adamant about for some reason, and that they'd obviously meet her and then sit in for the workshop that she'd be hosting. But the issue is she didn't follow through on a lot of those things. But what made this such a spectacle wasn't just that she wasn't following through on stuff, but that she was cataloging the entire demise of her workshops on her Instagram. Everything's completely fine, guys. I'm just drowning in mason jars right now. But what I think really made this scam so funny, at least to me, was that it's just so peak 2018 Instagram. And I think the best way to kind of show an example of that is the way that she kind of tried to tell the people who were spending $165 that she wasn't gonna be there for the first hour of the three hour workshop, but it was for their benefit. 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. New student orientation coffee and tea. I will not be here for this. I don't want to steal focus. I want you guys to get to know each other and most importantly, get caffeinated together. Wouldn't it be so great if you left this workshop with a new friend and a small caffeine buzz? Yes, I agree. There will be lots of coffee and tea and music and oat milk. This pre-workshop hour-long coffee tea session is totally optional. But why would you miss the chance to meet the interesting people who've decided to come to this workshop too? Go make some new friends, kiddo. Go off. Get the fuck away from me. I can't stress enough how disorganized this event was. Like it got to the point where she decided instead of having the workshops in other cities, that she would post on her Instagram story telling all of those people who bought those tickets to instead fly to New York to do the workshop there because she loved the space. And then in the options to vote on that, she didn't even give them the chance to vote no. It's honestly a really wild story and I'd be here for way longer if I tried to explain every little detail of it. So if you haven't heard of it before or you haven't heard like the whole story, I would really recommend checking out Kaylee Donaldson on Twitter. She made a really good thread about it as it was happening. That is just really entertaining to read through. I'll link it in the pinned comment down below if you're curious. But in terms of ranking, I'm gonna be honest, I'm kind of torn between manager expectations and gatekeep gaslight girl boss, but I think I'm gonna put it in manager expectations. The final scam that I wanted to rank today is definitely one that I feel like is the epitome of scam, and it's those luxury giveaways on Instagram. I have no idea how these things work, 
but I do know that I have not seen a single person ever win one of these giveaways before, which is kind of crazy when you consider that these kind of giveaways aren't just exclusive to influencers, which I feel like they're kind of more prone to scamming, but also really legit celebrities. I just find it so jarring when celebrities go from their typical celebrity-esque posts to being surrounded by like 700 boxes of Louis Vuitton and a caption in all caps being like, hey girl, do you wanna win all of this shit? Follow these 65 accounts and you'll be entered, XOXO. Also, was it a stylistic choice to write it like a chain email from 2008 or were you forced to? I definitely think that out of all of these tiers, it belongs most in the incoming jail era tier. It's out scamming the scams. That's concerning. But yeah, this is our ranking. It's definitive for me, but it doesn't have to be definitive for you. If there's anything you would have shifted around, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. But I feel like if there was any moral story in this video, it's that if you're on the internet, anyone can be a scammer if they put their mind to it. Anyways, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. It was actually fun getting back into the ranking swing of things. If you guys would be interested in me doing any more of them, let me know what kind of topics you'd like me to rank in the comments down below. But if you did enjoy the video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. If you want to keep up with my videos, you can actually click the notification bell and set it to all so it'll notify you whenever there's a new video. You can also follow me outside of YouTube on Twitter and Instagram, which are both at Casey Yonzo. And I also live stream on Twitch, which can get pretty chaotic, but I think we always have a lot of fun, which is great. So if you want to join us there, I'll be linking that in the pinned comment down below as well. But otherwise, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video again, and I'll see you guys in the next one.